So how was the drive home tonight? Were you angry about the amount of time you spent going nowhere? Did every traffic light feel like it was timed against you? Well, the days of carefree driving are a thing of the past, particularly if you live in Australia's cities. The more we build roads, the faster cars seem to fill them up. And the way we drive isn't helping either. So does science have a solution to our traffic nightmares? We sent Paul Willis on the road to find out. It's war on the roads. A battle between chaos and order. Scientists are waging a war on traffic and they're fighting it with cutting-edge technology. This is the Transport Management Centre in Sydney. Every major road across the city can be controlled from this room. It's one of the most advanced traffic management systems in the world. SCATS, or Sydney Coordinated Adaptive Traffic System, is the secret weapon. It's an intelligent computer that controls the city's 3,000 intersections. Got a broken down truck on a, on a major arterial route outbound of an evening peak. It detects congestion using pressure sensors in the road and automatically adapts traffic lights to optimise flow across the whole network. There's 300 cameras around the city relaying real-time conditions back to base. Operators can hone in on trouble spots and take action. And this is what they're up against. The problem is us humans. Every Australian believes they have the right to drive a car, so every year the traffic problem is getting worse. And it's not just the number of cars on the road that stuffs things up, it's the way we drive them. One driver can make an amazing difference simply because he goes too slow, he goes too fast, he weaves in and out of lanes, and that can have a really significant impact on on the remainder of the network. A Japanese mathematician has shown that one erratic driver causes the people behind to slam on their brakes. In heavy traffic, this driver can have the same effect as a blocked lane. Have you ever wondered why sometimes you can be crawling along in a traffic jam getting nowhere and then suddenly you're back up to 80 k's? And what was the trouble? It's the problem that drives us all mad, and mathematics may have the answer. When a vehicle breaks down, the cars behind brake and start to pile up, causing mayhem. And when roads are packed to the max, it doesn't take much to start a chain reaction that can last for hours. In a blocked lane, braking goes back through the traffic in a shockwave. Even when the blockage or the erratic driver is gone, the cars can't move off at once but must wait until the one in front has pulled off. Meanwhile, cars continue to pile up at the back of the jam, even though there's no longer anything up ahead. So perhaps the logical step towards order on the roads is to remove the human factor. Mike Regan has designed a smart car to improve road safety and it's one step away from removing driver control. Oh, OK. Well, what we have here is a, uh, a clever car that warns the driver if they're driving too fast, if they're driving too close to the car in front, if they're not wearing their seatbelt, if they're reversing and are likely to reverse into an object. This car is fitted with GPS, so it knows where it is. More importantly, it knows the speed limit of the piece of road that I'm on at the moment. So if I try and go too fast, the first thing it does is give me a warning. It'll go, tink. There it goes. And if I keep going, the accelerator pedal actually pushes back against me and says, I've got to slow down. It has a microwave radar system that tells you if you're too close to the vehicle in front. If you get within a two second gap, it gives you a visual warning. And if you get within one second, an alarm sounds. While the bells and whistles have been added with the best intentions, 
this is the most irritating car I have ever driven. So will the next step be to remove driver control completely? Look, you might be horrified to hear that in Europe there is a car at the moment that um, uh, will warn a driver if the car detects that the driver is becoming fatigued. Um, and if the driver doesn't respond, uh, the car will park itself. But is all this smart technology missing the point? How can the traffic scientists win the war when they're up against such huge and increasing numbers? The simple fact is there's a limit to the number of cars you can fit onto a length of road regardless of how people drive. Um, if you don't have enough road space, you can't fit the cars on, no matter what you do to it. And simply building more roads does not solve the problem. There's one rule that's hard and fast. Whatever we do to help one road is to the detriment of another road. The more we try to engineer our way out of congestion, the closer to gridlock we get. When a new road is built, it attracts more traffic. It puts huge pressure on the surrounding feeder roads and very quickly you get back to where you started, or even worse. Mass car ownership has now started to defeat its own advantages, but continues to increase each year. I think people have to realise that it's not always going to be easy enough just to jump in their car. As long as we keep driving, science will try to keep us all moving. But the unpredictable human factor and the increasing numbers of cars on the road may mean this is one problem with no solution.